Hi Soapies, Sherry here from AMD Soaps. Um, today I am making uh, what I am calling a farmer's market soap. This is the August Soap of the Month Club and I am running a little late making it so it's just barely going to have four weeks cure time on it before it goes out. My Soap of the Month goes out uh, the middle of every month. Um, so uh, it will it will have a good proper cure on it. It'll just it'll be close um, as far as if anything goes wrong during the cure process. Fingers crossed. Um, so today for fragrances, I am using Crafter's Choice. Uh, I call it tomato vine. It's actually called Farmer's Market Ripe Vine Ripe Tomato. It's a little bit of a mouthful. I just call it tomato vine. Um, we'll be using some of that. And then we'll also be using Crafter's Choice Dirt Fragrance, which I have used before. And I use it in combination with the hemp fragrance oil. And that accelerated. Um, I have since used the hemp fragrance oil by itself. And that also accelerated very badly. So I'm I'm hoping that it was the hemp fragrance oil and not the dirt that caused the um, acceleration. For colorants today, I'm using Pitch Black Mica from Micas and More. Usually when I do black, I do a combination of Pitch Black and Activated Charcoal. However, I am out of Activated Charcoal. Um, I just put it in order today with Micas and More. Yay. Um, and then I have some Red Oxide di dissolved, not dissolved, dispersed in water here and that is also crafter's choice i think it was called americana red pigment if you can read that kudos to you um so though that's the colorants so i'm using on top i am going to be using some white roses that i made um these are out of out of soap dough is what i i used a silicone mold to mold them out of um, and they're just a plain white. Um, no fragrance added to those. And then I will also be using Vita Burst uh, beads, black with charcoal. Um, I haven't. This is my first time using the Vita Burst beads as well. So that's the fun part of my soap club. Is sometimes it's uh, I get to experiment and play a little bit. So. The oil mix that I'm using today does have 1% stearic acid in it, um, and I, I use 1% in place of 1% of the olive oil, um, and I really like using that with my solid, solid soaps that don't need a whole bunch of swirling or moving, although I can do swirls. Um, I have done hanger swirls successfully with 1% stearic acid, it doesn't increase too much on me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here with my, sorry about that, uh, with my uh, fly solution here. And I'm still still getting used to using pre-mixed fly, so hang out with me here for just a second. 8.96 ounces. And this is going to be a small match. This is just going to be 32 ounces. Um, my membership... Uh, for the Soap of the Month Club has dropped just a bit, so I am I can drop it back down to a 9 bar batch and still have extras. Um, 
it does or it doesn't. It just certain fragrances um, that I've done experiments on seem to last better with the kaolin clay. So this is uh, extra water, 8.96. So I'm going to add in 8.96 aloe vera juice and try to minimize the splashing. soap in just about two weeks so I kind of feel like I'm, I'm doing this new again um, I just haven't had a lot of time between I have a Thursday night market that I do um, now I set up and sell soaps there and uh, I've had quite a few shows um, over the weekend so I just haven't had much time to get down here and when I have gotten down here the place is a disaster um, not terribly terribly messy disaster just stuff everywhere I'm trying to clean out stuff and um, kind of get uh, some things organized that's what I'm trying to do is organize things so this is my master batch bucket. Um, this has this is the one percent stearic acid. Last time I master batched, I did thirty six pounds of oils, so I had to label my buckets, so I know what's what. And uh, I'm gonna come over and check this out. This is this is what my master batch oils looks like. It is 65% hard oils, so you can see some of it has settled. Um, so I am going to give this a stir. If it doesn't feel like it's feel or look like it's mixing well, I'll grab the stick blender and do it with the stick blender. Um, but it it feels like it's moving pretty good. I haven't seen any huge. Actually, I haven't seen any chunks really. Um, that would indicate something has uh, settled back into a solid and not the homogeneous mixture. Um, it probably also helps that I have no heating or cooling in my my workspace. So right now it is hotter than Dickens in here. So I'm going to apologize for the fan noise you hear behind me. Um, usually I have the dehumidifier running too, but um, it seems to have dried out enough in here that the dehumidifier has actually turned itself off. Um, otherwise, I feel like that has been running non-stop. It's just, it's been so crazy humid the last few weeks. Even when it hasn't been hot, it's just been sticky humid. Um, so this is a small batch. It's going to be two pounds, so I'm going to weigh off that much oil and I haven't yet talked myself into switching over to grams units it took me it took me forever to get used to ounces so just making the switch to grams is scaring me a little bit uh, so I haven't done that uh, but it is it is on my list to just fine-tune my soap making process a bit um, now normally I would add my fragrance oils in at this point however because I want the two different colors the black is going to be the dirt fragrance oil and the red is going to be the tomato vine fragrance um, I'm going to have to color these once I have separated them. So, let's see. Uh, yeah, we are good to start mixing stuff up here. Um, it just feels so weird. It's just a little bit different. Um, I don't normally do soap batches like this. 
with split fragrances. This one, um, I didn't like the way they melded together when I combined them. So we'll see what happens when they're, they're two separate smells in a soap. We'll see if that makes any difference or not. Um, sometimes that works. I've done that with uh, another fragrance. Um, or, well, actually two fragrances um, where they didn't smell good mixed together, but I put them in two separate portions of the soap and they smelled great. Uh, the fragrances are a little tricky like that. So I'm going to give this a zhuzh. see what's going on here. And because this is one percent stearic acid it is going to move pretty fast. See, right now it's already at, it's already at uh, a good emulsification and uh, an extremely light trace. And because I'm going to stick blend my colors and the fragrances in, I'm going to leave it at this point. Um, it is just a super, super light, light trace. Um, it's not really supporting itself very well at all. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this by weight. And let's see. My total, total recipe weight, total volume weight right there, 55.38. So I divide that roughly into a fourth. It should be right around 13 or 14 ounces, roughly. That's really rough now. Um, we'll see. We'll see how far we actually get in this container. Oh, we got to 15 <laughs> before I even noticed we were there. Um, so I think I'm going to put my black down. I've been kind of debating, do I want the black on top or do I want the black on the bottom? And I think I finally, finally decided, yeah, I want the black on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the fragrance oil and I'm only, this is a really strong fragrance, so I'm only adding uh, 0.25 ounces. And I hit 0.35, it'll be all right. Um, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to add a really light half a teaspoon of mica in here. Um, I don't want this to be a super stainy, a super dark uh, soap. It's already going to you know, have some lather appearances because of the red oxide. So I don't, I don't want to make it really ugly with a black lather. messy lather for this soap um, yeah it's gonna it's gonna be more of a gray than a, a true black but that'll be okay and it doesn't look like this is accelerating at all it's it's looking really nice um, it's a really nice light lather or a light, <laughs> light lather, a light trace. Good to thinking about the lather. And uh, 
second guessing myself a little bit as far as how how dark I do really want it to be. Um, yeah, no, no, I'm gonna just leave it like this. I'm gonna move this one out of the way, and we'll bring the mold, bring the mold in. I'm sure, you guys can see that. Um, so if I haven't said it before, these molds, um, my husband makes them for me. And uh, I just line them with freezer paper. And I'm gonna have to give this a good, a good tap down um, because of the air bubbles that I, the stick blender put in there at the last minute. I don't know if anybody watches, I don't know if anybody watches these videos, uh, but I don't know if anybody who watches these videos uh, also watches Royalty Soaps videos. If you don't and you find the soap making process absolutely fascinating um, and you enjoy quirky personalities, uh, head on over to Royalty Soaps and check out Katie. Um, she has this cute little saying that she says as she's cleaning out her bowls and it's scrapey scrapey and she does it so cute i just sound creepy when i do it but uh anyways she actually has t-shirts and coffee mugs made for those and i'm hoping somebody somewhere loves me enough to buy me one just kidding i already ordered one <laughs> uh, so i'm gonna give this a quick bang on the floor to help level it out and to pop out those air bubbles That's it for the black. Um, I'm not even going to put a micro line or anything on there. I kind of thought about it quickly, but eh, nah, I'm going to leave it. So the rest of this, we need to add, oops, be careful with this one. Um, these bowls are Dollar Tree bowls, the Dollar Store bowls, um, but they're they're really nice for mixing. They're pretty sturdy, except the handle. I just, I don't trust that handle to support any real weight. So I try not to handle the bowl by just the handle. Okay, and we are going to add the tomato vine, and I am so in love with this fragrance. A friend of mine bought a tomato and strawberry soap for me that I, uh, I love. So now I'm, I'm on the hunt for a good strawberry fragrance to mix this with. And we are going to add 1.75 ounces of fragrance to this. I don't know if I'm going to need all of this. This is actually a lot of extra liquid. Um, so we shall see. Um, I might get a nice color without having to add all of it in. Um, we'll stop right about there and set that carefully to the side. And I'm not even going to clean off my stick blender because this small amount of color that's on here is not <coughs> even going to phase the soap color at all. <coughs> and it looks like I'm going to have to add one. Or I could just call it a pastel. I could just say this is, this is pastel soap. Ooh, that fragrance is nice though. I like that. <coughs> I like that a whole bunch. If you like tomato gardens or tomato vines or that green garden smell, yeah, this one's this one's up your alley. I'm trying to decide if I want it redder. I think I do. So, and it is thickening up quite a bit. Um, it was already thick before I added the fragrance oil. 
so the colorant, uh, the extra liquid from the colorant will also help loosen it back up a bit. Um, I just have to make sure it gets incorporated all the way to the fine using the stick blender. And I think that's going to be as good as we're going to get. Um, without it getting any thicker, so I'm going to have to be happy with this color that's going on here. So, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, I apologize for the super bright lighting. Um, it looks kind of orangey, and it, it is. It's a ready orange. Um, but I kind of like it. Uh, yeah, we'll just call it a pastel. Okay. Oh, I always have so much stuff in my way. I don't have enough workspace. Alright, so here is our soup, and here is our batter. Give this one more, one more stir, and this is the part, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I was thinking of leaving it at just a straight, solid line, but I'm not very good at pouring layers. So I'm kind of thinking I'm just going to let it be a drop swirl type into the black until there's no more black left. So let me set this to the side and yep. I'm just going to go ahead and let this kind of drop swirl into that bottom black layer and you can see a little bit of our black is up here I don't know if you guys can see that or not um, but I'll, I'll be working on getting a good camera angle um, for future videos so that maybe you guys can see more from top view rather than from the side um, yeah, it's just, uh, I just needed to start making videos and start creating a YouTube presence, and this was the way, the way to do it was just to start, okay, and here we go, I'm just going wiggle, 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 Everybody smooth. I don't do very good with my left hand. And I'm going to give this a quick bang and then we'll finish up the top. set those aside and clean those up later. Oh my goodness, it's warm in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is super quick because I'm not very good at guessing where my lines are. I'm going to grab a Sharpie marker here and I have my cheat stick right here and now, put some quick marks so I know where to place my roses. And yeah, okay, I'll do both sides today. 
I don't usually do both sides. Usually I just do one. And it kind of sort of works sometimes, occasionally. Um, so the other soap I'm going to work on this week is a... Uh, I'm part of a group that does a soap making challenge. Um, so we have a theme that we have to do, whether it's a technique or a, um, or as in this case, it's a theme. And uh, the theme for this month is mythical creatures. And I was kind of inspired by Miss Claire, the diva. Oops, I had to watch my fingers. I'm kind of, I'm catching the batter as I place this, and then when I push the rose in, it's leaving some color on top there. So I have to be a little bit more careful when I place these. But uh, Miss Claire has a thing for unicorns. And she has a thing for pandas. And uh, a few months ago, we were walking through Walmart, and we found a panda corn. Panda with the unicorn's horn. And uh, so that's going to be my soap. I'm going to make a panda corn soap. And uh, that's going to be the other project I work on this week. Uh, and then next week, I am probably going to try to do September's Soap of the Month, just to kind of get a little bit ahead, because August is an insane month for me. I have shows every weekend in August, plus every Thursday in August, and, um, yeah. Uh, August is going to be crazy. We'll leave it at that. So I need to get a little bit ahead of a few things. So here's, I placed all the roses and then I'm just going to grab my, my, uh, bite of beads here and I'm going to use, just going to use a small tablespoon and I'm just going to sprinkle these guys kind of down the center or wherever they land. A few more up there and then this way uh, if the user doesn't like them they can just brush them off the top. They're not. I thought about putting them through the whole bar uh, but uh, in the end I decided not to. Uh, so we're going to spritz that with alcohol just to help prevent soda ash. And then I'm bringing you guys in for a close-up. Check it out. That's going to be the August soap of the month. Thanks for joining me, Soapies. Have a great week.